uh, all the distinguished dignitaries present here today on the dais and of the dais. It is indeed a great privilege and honor to speak at the 17th Environment and Energy Conclave organized by the Bengal Chamber of Commerce Industries as part of the Sustainability Summit. I am thankful to the BCCI for having me invited me and presented me with an opportunity to meet the distinguished eminent speakers and the very curious audience. It is great to know that BCCI is one of the oldest institutions in India of its own kind and was perhaps the only Chamber of Commerce invited from India at the COP26 in Glasgow. So congratulations to BCCI for this notable feat and doing such a remarkable job in the field of sustainability. As uh, Mr. Bhattacharya said, I represent Gale India here, which is the youngest Maharatna under the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. So for some of you who may not know Gale, Gale was formed in the year 1984 with an objective to ensure effective and economic use of natural gas and its fractions in the industry. Now with the, with the humble beginnings that we made in 1984 and commissioned our first HBJ pipeline in 87, Gale is leading the natural gas transmission and marketing of gas in the country with diversification into liquid hydrocarbons, petrochemical production, exploration and production, renewables and power generation, and most importantly, city gas distribution. So we transport more than 65% of the natural gas in the country, and we import more than 50% of the gas into the country. Gale, together with its group companies has more than 70 geographical areas in the country and we are responsible for supplying gas to every nook and corner of this great nation. We also own more than 15% of the petrochemical capacity in this country. And at Gale, we are very strong advocates of sustainability and supply of clean energy with environmental responsibility being embedded in a part of vision statement. We are committed to the Government of India's vision of net zero and have announced our own targets for net zero by the year 2040. But then looking at the kind of uh, progress we are making, we recently advanced our targets to 2035. Uh, now, as I think uh, my earlier speakers have said already, a great focus is within Gale is now on electrification because most of our own compressors use gas as a fuel, as an internal fuel for consumption. So we are now trying to remove that fuel and trying to go for electrification. So that is one of the main areas of our drive towards sustainability. Uh, we also started uh, looking at renewables with a much more uh, much more focus and our target is from the current 120 megawatt we want to go to about 3 gigawatt in another 5 or uh, 6 years uh, most importantly at gale what has been done is i think there was a mention of hydrogen by my earlier speaker we have recently commissioned a green hydrogen plant and Vijaypur, and this is a 4.5 tons per day green hydrogen plant we have recently commissioned. This is the first megawatt scale PEM electrolyzer based hydrogen plant. And uh, I think this is one of the game changers as far as our country goes. And post this commissioning, we have seen a lot of changes in the electrolyzer space. And many of the suppliers now coming up with small modules for manufacturing hydrogen. So I think that, uh, that change is very, very important. And I, I think many of you would know that Gale is also doing hydrogen blending in one of the CGDs uh, in Indore. 
through its uh, joint venture Avantika Gas. And we are doing about 5% uh, CGD uh, blending of hydrogen into CGD network and about 2% in the CNG network. I think this is only going to go forward from here. So that is another big thing that we're doing. At Gale, I must also mention that we have recently commissioned two cryo boxes. When I say cryo boxes, these are two small scale LNG modules, units, which can together produce 36 metric tons of LNG per day. And these are again commissioned in Vijaypur. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to convert the natural gas into LNG by the help of these modules and then transport LNG to, to places where city gas is not able to reach as of now. So this is another major initiative we have taken. Uh, as you all know, India will, with around $4 trillion GDP, is the fifth largest economy. And we are also the third largest energy consumer. And we account for almost 7% of the total energy consumption of the world. Now, as we aspire to become a developed nation by 2047, uh, we will be about 30 trillion US dollar economy by all conservative means. And energy consumption will be at least three times of what we are today. Now, traditionally, this uh, increase in energy will come, will mean that there'll be increase in the fossil fuel consumption. Uh, but then as we all experience adverse impact on the climate because of increase in fossil fuel consumption, all the countries have taken pledge and announced their goals to reduce the carbon emissions and restrict the global, global warming to 1.5 degree of the pre-industry levels. Now, these commitments are definitely going to impact the consumption of fossil fuels for meeting the energy requirement, commensurate with their economic development. But then this has also posed challenges for our country because to meet the energy requirement of this great nation, uh, in the net zero scenario, India has to balance the consumption of fossil fuel vis-a-vis -vis the renewable energy usage. Now, when we are dealing with natural gas as a silver lining, natural gas per se is the cleanest fuel, fossil fuel, in terms of CO2 emissions. And coal, while coal has about two times of CO2 emissions in comparison to natural gas, oil gives about 1.4 times of CO2 emissions. So that way, natural gas is the cleanest fuel, and we call it the bridge fuel because I think right now the focus is on how to increase the consumption of natural gas in the, in the domestic uh, usage, in the transport sector, in the industries, and in every field where the energy is being consumed. So that is the focus area. And then uh, at Gale, what we have started doing is besides, the, uh, besides taking gas to each and every household and every industry, we have internally started reducing the gas consumption for our own fuel requirements. So we are trying to uh, see that the net zero targets are being met. And as I mentioned earlier, this is largely being done through electrification of our own uh, drives. And uh, I think many of you would know that uh, today uh, uh, we are about 16,500 kilometers of gas pipelines in the country already and about 4,000 kilometers is under construction. So out of the total uh, national gas grid of 34,000 kilometers, I think Gale will have the lion's share, which will be more than three-fourths of the entire gas pipeline. And I think what we come to know and we gather, I think the country will need at least five to 10,000 kilometers of gas pipelines more in the coming years. Now. The plan is to also set up a hydrogen testing facility in the country because there are some challenges which are coming with hydrogen in terms of its transportation, in terms of the operation maintenance. So that is one focus area to develop our own R&D uh, for hydrogen testing and uh, see that when we start transportation of hydrogen and uh, uh, blending it with the natural gas, what kind of impact it has on the on the metallurgy of the pipeline 
and more importantly on the on the maintenance of the pipelines because uh, uh, we understand work is still in progress and uh, clear cut guidelines are not available even now but that plan is underway now as per the british petroleum energy outlook uh, while the share of coal and oil will decline by 2050 and the share of natural gas also will see a decline but then the decline in natural gas is not going to be as much as coal and oil so therefore gas will continue to remain a sustainable fuel for years to come uh, now in the country today the consumption of natural gas is about 7% in the whole energy mix while the target of government of india is 15% by 2030 the the problem here is we have to lay gas pipelines and reach every industry every household now the challenges in laying a pipeline are innumerable the difficulties are huge and that is why the time taken to a pipeline which is typically 3 years is more than 5 to 6 years so here i think the speed of implementation will matter a lot because if you have to really take gas to uh, uh, every corner then this pipelines and the cgd networks have to come up very fast uh now uh, i think uh, since we are uh, here in the bengal chambers uh, conference conclave i think i should also mention that uh, we have recently uh, completed the pipeline which is going to feed gas to calcutta kolkata and now i think very soon our own company bengal gas uh, limited will start uh, supplying gas to to the uh, to the households in kolkata so the the pipeline is complete and uh, we are waiting for its uh, commissioning to take place uh another area where natural gas is uh, big in demand is the fertilizers so i think almost like 30 35% of the consumption happens in fertilizers uh but then uh, there are issues on gas affordability we would want the power sector and the refineries also to take gas because that is what is uh, the need of the hour but then the the uh, the gas prices sometimes are not uh, are not suitable for uh, the power sector and the power production now uh, so what we are anticipating is right now the most of the gas consumption will happen in the cgd sector in the coming uh, years and uh, after the 12th bidding round of pngrb almost the entire country is covered with cgd uh, so the challenges for us are uh, i think uh, to bring gas into the gst regime make it more affordable uh, especially uh, for cons consumption in the power uh, sector and uh, today the trilemma in front of us is security affordability and sustainability and uh, government of india is also taking a lot of action in this direction so measures are being taken to get the production of oil and gas from the smaller fields from the isolated fields we also have started i think there is a scheme for cgd cbg synchronization a lot of work is being done on the compressed biogas production now once you start production of compressed biogas the compressed biogas can also be mixed with the natural gas and that will only make us more more uh, self reliant the our dependence on imported gas is going to go down and uh, so there is a target of 15 mm tpa uh, 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 cbg production under the satat scheme uh, we at gail have taken lot of steps to enter into long term agreements with lng suppliers from across the world uh, i think this is only to ensure that the gas supply is uh, consistent it is always available it is affordable across the year and for years to come so at gail i think this is one of the main uh, focus areas to keep entering into lng long term lng contracts uh, 
one important area where we are now focusing at is to develop a LNG retail infrastructure. So when we have LNG retail outlets across the major highways, so what will happen is uh, uh, the long haul trucks, the big trailers, maybe they could travel 1000 to 1200 kilometers with just one fill of the uh, uh, cylinder, LNG cylinder. So that will definitely uh, go a long way in reducing the carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, so uh, going forward, I firmly believe that there is a lot of potential for natural gas in the immediate short to medium term. And all the scenarios for climate control are predicting the importance of natural gas as a bridging fuel in mitigating the climate change impact. Uh, one more important thing is, I think in all of our installations, we have started identifying the fugitive emissions, uh, the hidden emissions of gas, methane emissions, so that we are able to control the leakages. Sometimes, you know, those leakages go unidentified. So a lot of uh, technology is being used. We are using drone technology. We are using infrared cameras to identify all such leakages and trying to see that uh, they don't go and uh, pollute the atmosphere. So, uh, so uh, that is what I wanted to share with you. So I think uh, the most important part is, uh, as far as we are concerned, we are on track to, uh, to uh, be net zero. Uh, there is a lot of effort from our side, a lot of investments are being planned to be net zero. And I think since we are a gas company, we are a gas marketing and transmission <laughs> company, I, you should all imp understand the importance of gas. We have also uh, done a lot of innovative work in terms of hydrogen production and LNG uh, production to reach uh, uh, the remotest corners of the country. So with these innovations, I'm sure uh, uh, these will be some kind of a game changing uh, innovations and a uh, lot of other companies are following suit now. So the future is very bright. Uh, the only uh, my only uh, issue here is the speed of implementation is very important. 2030 is round the corner. So whatever decisions we take or whatever plans we make, how fast we implement them and how quickly we take those decisions will be the key to, to reach that target, to reach the goal. Thank you so much.